This is Minister Robert Mixon coming before you once again on behalf of the Gerard Church of the Living God, located at 947 Beaver Dam Road in Hartford, South Carolina. Part of our services Tuesday nights at 7.30 p.m., Friday nights at 8 p.m., Saturday morning service at 10.30 a.m., afternoon service at 3 p.m. every Saturday. You are always welcome to be with us in our worship service. Now the Bible tells us in John 8, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then I need my disciples in thee. If you continue in my word, then are, are ye my, my disciples, disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. So if you don't know the truth, then you're in bondage. But by knowing the truth, the Bible said the truth shall make you free. Second Timothy 3 and 16. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God. All right. All scripture, everything that's written is given by the inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine. This is the only thing profitable for doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. Now John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures. Alright, get your Bible and search the scriptures. For in them they think which have eternal life. Uh, for they are they which testify me. All right, search the scriptures. Men think they have eternal life. The Bible says they are they which testify of me. Now we've been talking to you in our previous broadcast concerning the identifying sign that God gave to his people. And that identifying sign is the seven-day Sabbath. Now, if you don't have that identifying sign, then you are not the people of God. We prove to you out of the scripture that Jesus himself observed the seven-day Sabbath. And even after his death, his disciples also Observe the seven day Sabbath. And we also brought in history and show you through the Roman emperors that Sunday, the first day of the week, was instituted, but not by God. And we want to go again to Ezekiel 20 and let us begin at the 11th verse. Ezekiel 20, beginning at verse 11. And I gave them my statutes. I gave them my statutes. I showed them my judgment, mm -hmm. which if a man do, he shall even live in them. He shall even live in them. More. All right, but then the Bible said, moreover, above all, also, also I gave them my Sabbath. Mm -hmm. To be a sign between me and them. All right, now notice it's Sabbath with an S, meaning more than one. Okay, what else is it? That they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. All right, so the Sabbath is the identified sign. Now let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And let us begin reading at the fifth verse. He said, I gave you my statutes and judgments. Behold, mm -hmm. I have taught you statutes. I have taught you statutes. And judgments. Mm -hmm. Even as the Lord my God commanded me. Right. That you should do so in the land whether you go to possess it. Mm -hmm. Keep therefore. Keep therefore. And do them. And do them. For this 
is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nation. All right, and because of the knowledge of God's statute, this is how God's people understand God's plan of salvation. However, mainstream religion teaches that God's statutes are no longer in force. But let us go again to the book of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. There you will find an outline of what the statutes of God, what are they? Leviticus 23, let's begin at first. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and say unto them, And say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, mm -hmm. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. All right, the Bible said, Holy convocation. Even these are my feasts. Mm -hmm. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Here again, talking about God's Sabbath. And holy convocation, mm -hmm. ye shall do no work therein. Right. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. What else is it? These are the feasts of the Lord. These are the feasts of the Lord. Now, if you read this entire chapter, you will find that God feast days, which have annual Sabbath days, apart from the weekly Sabbath. And these are the days that people are saying that they're done away with. All right, let's go to the book of Matthew. Now remember, Apostle Paul admonished us not to assume anything, but to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Matthew 19 and 17. Let us hear what it said. And he said unto, and he said unto him, Why cause thou me good? Mm -hmm. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, Keep the command. All right, so this young man wanted to know from Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him, if you would enter into life, keep the commandments. Amen. And the commandments contains the seven-day Sabbath. Amen. Now remember, we went to the book of Acts, and we showed you where Apostle Paul, when he was in service with the Jews and the Gentiles, he spoke and taught of God's Sabbath. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Now, Apostle Paul was a great man of God, and he also observed the Sabbath, and he also taught it to the Gentiles. Let us see what it says, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Be ye followers of me. Be ye followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. All right. Even as I also of Christ. So, Apostle Paul, let the followers know you can follow me. And Apostle Paul observed the fourth commandment which is the seventh day Sabbath. Now, this is not a very popular subject because mainstream religion believe and they are taught that Sunday is the Sabbath day, is the Lord's day, the first day of the week. But you cannot if you read the Bible from cover to cover, you cannot find a place where God sanctioned the first day of the week. Now, let's go to the book of Colossians. This is a scripture 
that mainstream preachers and teachers use to what they call do away with the Sabbath and God's statutes, which are the feast day. But let us hear what it says in Colossians 2 and 16. Read it in your Bible, Colossians 2, 16. Let no man therefore judge you. Let no man therefore judge you. In me. In me. Or in drink. Or in drink. Or in respect of a holy day. Mm -hmm. Or of, a new, of the new moon. New moon. Or of the Sabbath days. Or of the Sabbath day. Now, this is the scripture that they use, but now let us go to the first chapter of Colossians and let us read that first verse to get some more clarity on what Colossians 2, 2 and 16 is saying. Colossians 1 and 1. Paul and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul and apostle of Jesus Christ. By the will of God. Mm -hmm. And Timothy, our brother, right to the saints and fight for brother. Now notice who Apostle Paul is addressing this letter to. The Bible said the saints and faithful brother and faithful brother in Christ, mm -hmm. which are at Colossae. All right. So this is why he said, "Let no man judge you in me." or in drink, or in the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, because the saints were observing and keeping these days. And remember the Bible says, whatsoever thing were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. So the reason why he was saying, let no man judge you, because they were already instructed out of the scripture Amen. to observe these days. Amen. This is not doing away with the Sabbath day. I understand that this is not popular. However, the Bible tell his minister, cry loud, spare not, and lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob, their sin. Now, let's go to 1 Kings 22 and 8. Now we're going to show you how unpopular God's true men are when they're standing up for the true word of God. The Bible said, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, rebuke, reprove, and this is what God man is going to do. But let's look at 1 Kings 22 and 8. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imad. All right, now Joseph, Jehoshaphat had asked for another prophet, a prophet of God. And it said, There is yet one man, mm -hmm. Makai, the son of Imla, uh -huh. by whom we may inquire of the Lord. Uh -huh. But I hate him. The Bible said, he said, I hate him. For he doeth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. All right. So the true man of God will not be popular. Amen. Because he's going to speak the true word of God. Isaiah 30. And verse 8, let us hear what it says. The true man of God. Now go, write it before them in a table. Write it before them in a table. And note it in a book. Note it in a book. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Mm -hmm. That this is a rebellious people. This is a rebellious people. Lying like children. Mm -hmm. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. And this is the same thing that's going on in this society which we live in now. They will not hear the true word of God. 
They say to the seers, and they're saying to the seers, see not, see not, and to the prophets, mm -hmm. prophesy not unto us right things. All right, prophesy unto us not right things. Speak unto us things, prophesy smooth. All right, smooth things. So this is what the religious world wants today. They want smooth things. But the man of God is going to bring forth the true word of God, Jeremiah, the first chapter. Now the Bible speaks in Timothy about the, in the last day that men will not receive sound doctrine. Say they would have a form of godliness, but denying the power there. Jeremiah 1. 17. Thou therefore gird up thy loins. Gird up thy loins. And arise. And speak unto them all that I command thee. Speak unto thee all that I command thee. Now this is God letting Jeremiah the prophet know that he had to do what thus says the Lord. What is it? Be not dismayed at their faces. Be not dismayed at their faces. Lest I confound thee before them. All right, see, now, the man of God is not going to be dismayed. He's not going to be afraid because he said, what, read it? Thou therefore gird up thy loins mm -hmm. and arise. And speak unto them all that I command thee. All that I command thee. Be not dismayed at their faces, mm -hmm. lest I confound thee before them. All right, what else is it? For behold, I have made thee this day. I have made thee this day. A defense city. A defense city. A iron pillar. A brazen wall against the whole land. A against, brazen wall against the whole land. Against the kings of Judah. God, man, will stand against the whole world. What else is it? Against the princes. Therefore, uh, against the priests. Thereof, against the priests. Thereof. And against the people of the land. Uh huh. And they shall fight against thee. They shall fight against thee. But they shall not prevail against thee. The Bible says they will not prevail. For I am with thee. All right. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So we are asking you to search the scripture. Right. Ask your pastor. Ask your bishop about which day is the Sabbath, the identifying sign. So the Bible said that this is the thing that sanctified God's people from the world. And let me tell you, the observance of the seven-day Sabbath, it will set you apart. You will stick out just like a sore thumb. However, there's nothing but the truth of God. This is the same by now, and we really would like to give it.